My dear and highly respected friends and mentors, I shall omit uh, titles in the interest of uh, brevity and um, express my apologies at not being with you today at Santa Maria de Montserrat. I will, however, come straight to the point. In Berlin on the 5th of March, we, those committed to the concept of uh, saving the world and developing global commons, uh, committed ourselves to the concept of human warming or human warning. Al Gore, uh, my colleague, uh, recipient of the United Nations Environment Program Prize, spoke of uh, global warming. I want to speak about human warming in terms of the contradictions that exist between three spheres today. Firstly, our multilateral economic structure is breaking down because nation-states resist fooling their sovereignty, and I believe that sovereignty begins in the hearts and minds of those who, in the words of my wife's uh, forebear, Sheikh Shahab al-Din Sohrawardi, describes as the wisdom of illumination. Each one of us carries that light, ex oriente lux, that light that Karen Armstrong refers to in the context of the axial age that came from the East. And if each one of us returns to our Maker with that light, I think that we will be able to speak of the dawning of a new age, a new age of illumination and enlightenment. But today, globalization, in the words of Professor Minolio, does not develop cosmopolitanism or conviviality on the contrary, market-driven market solutions have proven incapable of addressing the critical problems that transcend national boundaries. The coming transformation must include, the coming adjustment must include and reach beyond business and government, neither of which are designed to spearhead, organize and absorb fundamental structural shifts. We, involved in the question of interreligious conversations, must go beyond words to actions. And in that context, I want to say that the silenced majority must articulate itself on the issues and in particular bring a programmatic attempt, as my friend Yehuda al the director of the Central European University, would say, a programmatic attempt at a new anthropology uh, of uh, knowledge. And in that sense, I want to say that the anthropology of knowledge is not limited to the public sector, the knowledge of governments uh, patronizing peoples, the knowledge of the private sector, the new inventions uh, leading the 1.7 billion uh, consumers protected by the gold curtain, as my friend, the political scientist from Brazil, Christopher Buarque, would describe it. But... Knowledge is the intersection of uh, cooperation between men and women of goodwill in civil society all over, the, all over the world. In that sense, let me say that in the religious sphere, the third sector is neither public nor private, yet underlies both. It has autonomous life because it is inherently spiritual, ontological, and simultaneous in world time reveals our sovereignty as world citizens, kivis mundis sum, rather than kivis romanus sum. It exists at the intersection of society and nature, and is grounded in cooperation and our will to survive. And in that sense, it belongs to no one, and thus to everyone. It is intergenerational, from our ancestors, to us, to our children, and future generations. Regarding truth in faith, I think it is essential to bear in mind the importance of teaching by analogy. And in that sense, I have pleaded with all of you, particularly in the European context, for the movement of the Erasmus Mundus program to our region, to teach by analogy. Like all our faith, Islam places the highest value on social harmony and social peace. But in this sense, I want to say that it is tragic that the continuing conflict of ugliness is in direct contradiction to the spiritual relevance of meetings such as this. I am reminded of the beauty of the Catholic Catechism, which was given to me by Cardinal Ratzinger at the time in the early 1990s, 
reading the spiritually hewn text, one is gloriously aware that there is a dialogue of conviction between man and God, a dialogue of beauty and truth. The dialogue of ugliness, however, that prevails today in the name of terror in its different forms is a dialogue of human beings. So how do we change this reality? I would like to suggest to you that the time has come to speak of a new beginning, a new adjustment, and to remind you that Herr Schlauterpracht, not so long ago, spoke in Cambridge University in England about the importance of ideas for a law of peace. You refer in the draft statement to the Declaration of Human Rights 60th this year, and I would like to suggest that in this particular reference you add the importance of a strategic objective, and that is developing a new international humanitarian order. I had the privilege of co-chairing that initiative in 1988 when we presented it to the General Assembly, but when the non-governmental organizations came to me and said, we are the lobby for the powerless, I had to admit that we are the powerless lobby for the powerless. I refer among your number to two friends, associates, and possible representatives, William Bentley on the one side, who has been the driving force behind the World Conference for Religions and Peace, of which I am uh, privileged to be the uh, President Emeritus today, and Gary Vakurias, who represents the Institute for Interreligious and Intercultural Research in Chambézy in Geneva. I have asked both of them to try and relate in some manner a practical suggestion that we recognize the global commons. We are not talking here about oceans and skies, we are talking here about the intersection between education and unemployment, but also the intersection between education, global human rights and civil liberties. We are talking about standards, not only of ethics, values and morals, but the combination of all three in what Hans Küng has so elegantly described as international standards. I remember when Küng and Helmut Schmidt called for an international code of conduct of rights and responsibilities, including collective knowledge and wisdom. And I would like to suggest that with the Internet revolution, the question is not the collective data, the collective informatique, but the collective resolutely to the problems that we face. We do not need only better governance, but we need better governance of uh, situations where problems are calling out for solutions.